Now to our daily interview, brief interview. My next guest needs no introduction. Um, we're joined today by Professor Albert Fennec. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Fennec, for being with us today. Thank you. It's always a pleasure and spending some of your Saturday afternoon here. Um, I wanted to ask you for an update on the coronavirus as a physician, because the updates change every day, and obviously there are different opinions. Well, I think the opinions vary, because every uh, day, virtually, you learn something new mm -hmm. uh, about the coronavirus. At the beginning, for example, it, we were told that it was not airborne, that it wasn't transmitted uh, from human to human, and now we know that it is. Um, so we're getting to know more about it. The worrying thing is that it seems to mutate, change its, its uh, structure much quicker than other viruses that perhaps uh, we've known in the past, which might cause problems with vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, everyone's working hard to develop a vaccine that hopefully will, will be will hit the nail on the head. Yes. Uh, so Obviously, opinions vary about when we're going to see this vaccine coming to market. Yeah. Um, I mean, basically, some studies have started uh, on, a, on an urgency basis. There's some vaccines have been given on, on, uh, on an urgent basis in some countries. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know the results. Do we, know, uh, do we know anything at this stage about side effects of this potential vaccine once it's here? No, because it hasn't really been started in general use in human beings. So yes. no, we don't. Yes. I mean, there's usually a process. Um, until you can get a licensed vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's an urgent need for it now because it's a pandemic. It's not uh, something much milder than that. Yes. So people are working pretty hard to develop a vaccine. Yes. Um, um, I, 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 want, I wish also to address um, cardiac patients. Mm -hmm. um, during this time with COVID-19, with the outbreak here in Malta, um, we've had, obviously, we always have requests from people who watch TV. Um, some are concerned, some cardiac patients are concerned because um, their appointments have been postponed. Others are very worried that they may have an emergency and are very reluctant to be taken to Mater Dei Hospital, as an example. Um, can you shed some light on people who are watching us today? I think the most important one is the last point that you mentioned. Uh, because people are apprehensive of going to hospital, those people who might be having a heart attack, where speed is of the essence, every minute counts, uh, the sooner you get yourself to hospital, um, the better the chances of A, survival, and B, um, quality of life will improve dramatically. So if you think you're having a heart attack, then go straight to hospital. There are two um, places where you can go. Um, the, the emergency now has split itself into a COVID and, and a non-COVID one, and you're taking it straight to the cath lab, which is non-COVID. Uh, there are no um, no risk of catching COVID. Yes, and that's, that's, the, that's the sort of concern. They feel that they might be at risk by going to the hospital. I, th I think the, the risk of that has been minimized. A, yes. because they most outpatient uh, appointments. Uh, secondly, because they've segregated the hospital into potentially hot and not so hot uh, mm -hmm. sections. But this has been seen not only in Malta, but in, in other countries, where people have actually died because of their apprehension of going into hospital. And, yes. And it's important and vital that if you've got a cardiac condition or you think you're having a heart attack, go straight to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Second point, uh, the outpatients. Yes, um, because of what we're going through, a lot of outpatient appointments have been uh, postponed. If you think you're an urgent case, then contact your GP, who in turn can contact 
we felt them in hospital and therefore expedite uh, because people obviously are being seen as emergency. If someone is considered an emergency, um, also there are hotlines nowadays where you can talk to cardiologists on a one-to-one -one basis. Sometimes a phone call is all that's needed to yes. put the mind at rest. Yes. The thing about heart disease, and this is happening. Uh, this happens when something like COVID happens, and people start coming out with drugs, saying, "Oh, this is a wonderful drug; it cures patients." Um, and one drug that seems to bring a lot of popularity in the media is a combination of uh, hydroxychloroquine, which is anti-malaria, and uh, azithromycin, which is an antibiotic. Uh, so people started using it blind. Um, unfortunately, this has been strongly condemned by the heart associations, and the studies that have started in France and Brazil have had to be stopped because hydroxychloroquine can cause serious cardiac problems. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the panic and the fear that arises, a lot of people have tried to start bulk buying these two drugs when they haven't been tested. Yes. Um, there have been anecdotal reports that they might be beneficial, but in fact, the, the side effects of um, hydroxychloroquine um, have yes. yes. can be detrimental. Yes. In the instance that a cardiac patient is admitted to hospital and taken to the intensive care unit, um, what are, what, how can we put people's minds at rest that they are still going to be segregated? And also, I believe um, that the standard form is that no visitors are allowed at the stage. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Uh, but like I said before, I mean, hospital now has been organized into a hot um, and a cold area. The hot being uh, possibly COVID positive. And, um, and people get tested when they come in, or even people coming to angiograms get tested uh, for COVID. But we do have a COVID free quarantine unit as well. So I mean, we, we duplicated the uh, intensive care and the cardiac care into potentially hot uh, hot and cold. Thank so you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you very much. This is a very brief insight, but I thank you. And I know you'll be with us again in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much, Professor Fenech. That's fine. Thank Good you. Luck. Good night. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for being with us again today. Should you have any queries, any questions, keep sending them in to Net TV, to myself directly. I'll see you tomorrow at seven o'clock. I wish you a good night.